In lesson three, we're going to be creating cross-sections um, by dilating. So we're going to look at some different cross-sections, do some dilating, and then um, we're actually going to be creating um, a little mobile. So on page 219, go ahead and um, dilate this triangle. Okay, so go ahead and dilate this triangle. Um, using P as the center and a scale factor of two. So remember what that means is you put your ruler zero at the center, measure out to each point, okay? Figure out how many centimeters it is, then multiply by the scale factor, okay? So then multiply each of those by the scale factor of two and then plot your new point. So do that and then um, come back. So this point D was 5.2 centimeters from P, so 5.2 times two gives me 10.4 centimeters. So that's where I'm gonna put point D prime. So I'm gonna measure this out here, get point D prime rotate, do the same thing with C. It was like 2.9 centimeters. On my drawing, this is going to be different than yours. Um, so don't do my same measurements. Okay, and get C prime, then turn measure to get B prime. So double it, find B prime. Then connect. Okay, so then go ahead and connect those and you'll have your dilated Triangle, so what are some things that you notice about the drawing? What are some things that you are wondering? Okay, so some things that you could have noticed or wondered um, could have been, you know, you noticed that the sides were two times longer. Okay, so the, the side lengths dilated. So BC times two gave you B prime, C prime if you measured those. Okay, maybe you noticed the angles stayed the same. Um, maybe you said, hey, these kind of look like triangular cross sections based on yesterday's lesson. Maybe you also said with these dotted lines, it looks like there's a triangular pyramid here. Okay, so maybe you're, and maybe you're wondering about that. Okay, so some of the things, let me type some out. So triangular cross sections. or looks like triangular cross sections. Um, doubled the lengths. Angles the same. Um, and then some things that you maybe wondered. Okay, maybe you were um, wondering about the area. Okay, is the area double like the lengths are double? Um, okay, what if we were dilating a circle? Okay, versus a triangle or maybe a rectangle. What would this look like? So maybe those are a couple of things that you're wondering. You could have definitely wondered or noticed more things. Those are just a few that might have happened. So let's take a look then at actually creating a sculpture out of um, dilated shapes. So this is a top view okay, of a triangle and a square pyramid. Okay, where A is the vertex. So think of this coming out of your screen. Okay, and we've got a triangular pyramid. So looking like this. Okay, and a square pyramid looking like this. So this top point is this A. This gray base is what you're seeing pictured here. So the gray square base for this one. And then that point A. So let's take a look then at actually... Um, if I were to dilate these. So this isn't in your book, this is just getting ready for what we're gonna do next. So if we took and did um, scale factors of each of these bases, okay? So if we're gonna dilate, we just connect to the vertex so we can measure out, 
So we're going to be dilating around point A. So I connected point A all the way out. So I can measure along there. So if we did a scale factor of 0.75, we would get this on each of them. Okay, or 0.5. Or if I dilated it at 0.25. So those are some examples of the dilations of these two shapes and what we're going to be getting into. So we're going to be creating a mobile, okay, um, or a structure. It's going to look similar to this. So you'll need to um, find a couple people to work with if you're in class. Um, and so the supplies that you need are these. You'll need a calculator, four sheets of paper, one long piece of string, um, and a compass. So grab those things and then come back to the video. All right, so when we're creating this, so step one, okay, so just follow along on these step-by-step -step instructions. So locate and mark the center of your sheet of paper by drawing diagonal. So on all four sheets of paper, and you should split this up. Okay, so not every person needs to do four unless you're working by yourself, okay, at home. Otherwise, um, you should be working with two to three people. So, so find the center of each of the four pieces of paper. Step two, okay, so this is on page two nine, um, this is on page 220. Each group member needs to pick one of these scales. Okay, one to two, depending on um, how many people you're working with. So you're going to choose one of these scales for each sheet of paper. Use your scale factor to dilate that piece of paper using the center you marked. Okay, so here's the piece of paper. So you're going to measure from the center to the corner, multiply by your scale factor, then measure the new distance. Okay, then repeat that to each corner and then connect. Remember, it will look similar to what we did here. Okay, so if you have a 0.75 scale factor, it should look something like this on your paper. Okay, so get through that um, for each of the pieces of paper. Okay, so make sure all four pieces of paper get done with a different scale factor. Then you're going to complete your table. Okay, so you're going to measure the length of your scaled rectangle. Okay, so wherever, whatever your scaled rectangle is, measure the length and the width. Okay, so length and then width. And then calculate the area, which is length times width. Okay, so fill that in for whichever scale you did. So if you did the 0.5, fill that in. Then collect the data from the other people that you're working with to get your entire table filled in. Then come back to the video and check your measurements. Okay, so here are the measurements. Here's what it should be if you did them correctly. So make sure that if any of these are done incorrectly that we get them fixed before we move on. Okay, so we need to make sure that we have these correct before we cut. Okay, so then cut each of your rectangles out. Remember, it's going to look like this. Okay, so you'll have four different rectangle sizes. So then cut them out. Then the next step is going to be to be actually creating this mobile or this um, structure here. So with your string, you're going to fold your string in half. So you've got this long string, you're going to fold it in half. Okay. And then with a marker, put a little mark on where that halfway point is. Okay. So put a little marker on where that halfway point is. Then with it folded in half, fold it in half again. Okay. So you've got this part marked. Now fold it in half and put a marker mark on those two points so that you've split your string into um, four equal parts. Okay. 
then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your string, well, take a compass first, okay, and make holes in each of your papers at the center, just a tiny hole. So just poke a hole, and then you're gonna thread the string through. So you're gonna take your largest piece of paper, okay, get a knot in the string, and then thread the string through that hole, okay, all the way down to the knot. Then you're gonna tie a knot at the next um, mark, okay? So remember your string is marked in um, three different places. So now you've just tied a knot at the bottom, okay? So you tied a knot here. Now you're gonna go find that next mark, tie a knot, and then thread the next piece of paper on. Then you're gonna repeat for the next mark, Okay, tie a knot, thread the next paper on, then find the final mark, tie a knot, and thread your um, last piece of paper on. So smallest, or sorry, largest to smallest. So then you should be able to hold it up and it'll look like this. All right, so then here's some discussion questions you can discuss um, with whoever you worked with. So you can pause the video, talk about it, then come back. All right, so if you've got the K value of one, you didn't really have to do anything. You just needed to measure the sides, right? Because the, the scale stayed the same. So you just measured the sides to calculate the area. Um, and that was kind of all you had to do. Um, that scale factor of one was located at the bottom of the pyramid. Okay, which is called the base of the pyramid. Okay, so that scale factor of one was our base. Um, how do the length and width of your cross sections relate to the scale factor you chose? Okay, so they should be time, you should be taking the original and then times your scale factor equaled your length. So if we go back to this table, this one's 0.25. So this should be 0.25 of the original. So if we took 28 times 0.25, it should be about 6.7, okay? Or 28 times 0.5, okay? Should be about 13.5, a little bit off because half of 28 is 14, okay? But a pretty similar length there, okay? So about the same scale factor. Um, and then was the area of the rectangle dilated by the same scale factor, okay? So if we take a look here, is 35.25 times 602, okay? So if we do 602 times 0.25, okay, that equals 150.5. So no, because this is only 35, not 150. Okay, or this one was 0.5 for the scale factor. Half of 600 is 300. Okay, so this the area scales are not staying. Okay, are not in the same scale factor. The lengths of the sides, same scale factor. Area, not so much. All right, so let's take a look here at the lesson synthesis. So let's review. Um, and so if you had um, a scale factor of 0.5, so for two groups with pyramids of different heights, how did the placement of the scale factor of 0.5 rectangle differ in each pyramid? So if we had, um, it would have just been further away. So if your string was different heights, okay, it's still, the 0.5 still would have been halfway through, okay? So this one would have been halfway to the top of the string. Okay, even if your string was, was different. Um, so what's the difference between using the center of the rectangle as a center of di dilation and using the top vertex? Okay, so using this versus this. So on the two-dimensional, it just stayed on the paper, right? We just drew on the new kind of rectangles. When you use the top of the string, then it becomes this three-dimensional shape. Okay, so if you kind of let go of your string, it collapses down to just using the center of the paper. 
And then if you pull the string up, then you get the dilation of a point off of the piece of paper, creating that square pyramid. Um, what would happen if we dilated a rectangle of um, 0.1? So if we think about this structure here, right? So this bottom one was our K value of one. This was K of 0.75. Here's K of 0.5. Here's K of 0.25. So where would a K value of 0.1 go? So point one is getting smaller and smaller. So that one would be way up here, okay? Just a very small little parallelogram up here at K equals point one. Getting closer and closer to that apex or a point of zero. So point nine, where would point nine be? So point nine would be in here. Okay, smaller than the base, but bigger than the 0.75. And then all the way up at the point here, so all the way up at this apex or this dilation point, that would be K equals zero. Okay, so our, so our range of scales, so the scale can go from zero to one. Okay, so zero has to be less than or equal to the scale factor and the scale factor has to be less than or equal to one. So it could be anywhere between zero and one. So then let's take a look at our summary. So we see um, if we take these triangles laying flat um, on your desk and then we pull a point directly above, then we can kind of create this pyramid shape. So if we took half, right, then it'd be halfway to the top, halfway to the point of dilation if we were doing a scale factor of 0.5. And we can add in some other ones and they just continue to look more and more like a pyramid, filling that in. So this one's a triangle versus the one you were working on was a rectangle. Scale factor of one being the base all the way up to that apex with a K value of zero. So just continuing to get smaller and smaller until it's just a dot or a point.